I study integrated poverty eradication and large-scale ecosystem rehabilitation. I started to think that someone should really do something about the environment, but I, I sort of meant somebody else <laughs> should do something about the environment. And I realized eventually that that was a very bad attitude. And if I were going to do something about the environment, what would I do? And I work in television, so it became clear that probably the best thing to do would be to use television and the media to communicate about the environment. I've made many films on different ecosystems, deserts, grasslands, wetlands. So I've started to look into the function and dysfunction in terrestrial ecosystems, and this seems to be a rather important area to look at. We have a project which we call Earth's Hope, looking at different parts of the world where there are large degraded ecosystems and what might be the potential for restoration in these places. The Lus Plateau is the cradle of Chinese civilization, so this is where the Chinese race emerged. And it's approximately the size of France, and by a thousand years ago it was already fundamentally destroyed. So the area became very famous for, for suffering, and there were constantly flooding and drought, and then you, 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 when you have these sorts of disruptions, then you have mudslides and dust storms and famine, and they, had, they experienced all these things uh, repeatedly. The Chinese government noticed that there were massive sedimentation loads going into the Yellow River. And they found that if they tried to maintain the soil stability in the plateau, then it was actually cheaper to do that than it was to mitigate the, the sediments in, in the river. So they started a project to restore the viability in the Lis Plateau. And when they did this, they did very thorough scientific analysis. They used uh, geographical information systems to map every watershed in the plateau. They also went to local people and they used a participatory assessment mechanism to engage them in the inquiry. The whole place looked terrible. It's, it's actually was called the most eroded place on earth. And so they began to, to intervene to infiltrate the water. Then they terraced, so they de decided some areas would become uh, ecological land and some areas would become economic land for agriculture. So they reforested on the slope lands, they terraced, they infiltrated and retained water and they improve the agricultural crops, mainly moving to perennial crops instead of uh, annual crops, and beginning a process which engages those people as the agents of change, which then make them into the solution. Now, this started in 19, I started documenting it in 1995, and now it's 15 years. The, the outcome was a very, very good result. So it shows that it's possible to rehabilitate large-scale damaged ecosystems, including ecosystem function that's been lost over very long time horizons and over very broad areas. This allows us to see a rationale and gives us a functional methodology for ending poverty in one go and beginning a process which engages those people as the agents of change which then make them into the solution. So it, it really is a comprehensive solution which restores ecosystem function but also ends poverty, helps to address disparity, addresses desertification, food insecurity, conflict, migration. This is a, a, a comprehensive way to address all of our problems and not to look at climate change, which really seems to be a symptom of systemic planetary disruption, and look at the underlying causes and address those underlying causes so we're not simply addressing a symptom, we're actually dealing with the problem.